Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Now, two weekends ago I did a video where I rough turned a large wet walnut log and I got five of these rough turned boxes from it. Also done, I think at least one, one if not two videos where I then finished them off. One was literally a week later and which has turned out fine. This video I'm going to also do something else that's totally new to me. Now, last year when I went down to UKIS, I bought these colouring pencils. And they're not ordinary colouring pencils, uh, they may look it, but these react to water. So they should literally turn the colour of the pencil almost to like an ink. And you do that using these little things here, they're like a brush that you then just brush over the actual colouring with to then you can merge all the inks and everything. Now I believe other brands do make these. These are Derwent, which are actually a, a British company. I believe they've also got a factory up here in Cumbria, which I may have even visited probably 20 odd years ago before I even lived up here. So to do a demonstration on this, this is actually the first box that I rough turned on that video two weeks ago. So yesterday while I was out here just finishing up I decided to finish this off. I've finished the inside off. It's been sanded to 600, sanding sealer and a couple of coats of wood wax 22 in there. Now the outside I've just sanded to 600 and left it as it is. So some of this is going to be a bit of experimentation to see what I need to do first and I've also got a scrap piece of plywood to experiment with the pencils to see the best way of dealing with this. But the first thing I want to do is that, so that I've got something to colour in, I'm going to do a bit of pyrography on here. Now this, hopefully you can see on there, does have some spalting on here, which I want to keep away from. I don't want to touch that, I want to leave that as it is. So I've actually got a nice piece on the other side here. And I've just printed out this, found a picture, resized it to, to suit this. And I'm going to attach that onto here. And so I'm going to trace the main lines out and then I'm going to burn them, burn them in with my Peter Child's biography tool. Now that's all finished. I might even find that this is just too fine a detail for doing these, but as per usual, I'm showing my first attempts at something. So I'll show the mistakes as well as hopefully any success. Now I've opened both of these kits. So I've got these straightforward ink tent, ink tents ones here and there's six pencils there. And there's a bright blue, a violet, a sun yellow, a poppy red, a field green and an ink black in it. I've also opened the metallic 12. There's silver, pewter, gold, antique gold, bronze, copper, yellow, red, pink, purple, blue, and green. Now, when you buy their kits, you buy these and you also buy uh, like these application things. And there are two part things. So you've got your basically your water tank here 
and on this end is a brush. Now before I do it on here, I'm just going to practice on my bit of plywood here. And I'm just going to put, say, a little bit of the blue. And you just use them like an ordinary crayon. Bit of violet there. Bit of sun yellow. And a bit of red. And at the same time, I will go for on this side a bit of silver. Now, this might not show up on the camera too well. And a bit of gold. And let's go for a blue. So you just use them like an ordinary colouring pencil on that part. This is where the magic comes in. Hopefully that's showing up on there. Straight away it's turning the colours. Into an ink and that's probably too much water on there. Hopefully you can see the effects that they do on there. So I'm going to go for that silver again. And the gold. So it's got lots of water in there again. Just do that again. I don't know how well it actually shows in the camera there. But where these colours are. They've really just come through like inks. I think I will just start putting some colours in on various places first of all, fill it up and then have a play around with the water on there. I think I'm going to start off with these, put some green in here. I'm going to start on this small one here first of all. I think a bit like the acrylic paints. Uh, I think I read it somewhere where these want to be on a dark surface to show up better. So I don't know how well that is showing on the camera there, but that is now really more of ink colours than the crayon I've just put down. So I'm going to let that dry off for a few minutes and I'm going to go on and do the others. Now you can actually blend these all in so you can take one colour across to the other to darken it up a bit, a bit like that. I'm doing with the black there. I'll let that dry and then I'll come back when I get it some more done. So I'm just going to carry on with some more on here. I'm going to do the main one in here now. And I've picked up the metallic green to start with and just do these leaves. And this time I'm going to try and do it so it's not quite so random.
So it's a little bit more organised this time. Hope you can see what that's like. And you can see these colours are very more crowny compared to like that, which has had the water over them. So this time I'm going to go over the water, but I'm going to try and concentrate on one colour at a time and make sure there's not so much water going on. And I'm going to start off with the pewter I put around the edge. I've got to say that that looks an amazing difference already. Hopefully that shows up. So I'll just clean me piece off here. And it is just a case of literally wiping that over kitchen towel and it's cleared that straight away. So I'm going to go for the yellow this time. <laughs> So that's that one now complete. That needs to dry off and I'll colour this one in and do the same and I'll come back at the end. Done that last one. Uh, round the edge I think was supposed to have been something like um, antique gold but it didn't go on very well. Now what I have done is I've just put two more sets on here of colours. These are all dried off and hopefully that's a good example there. You can just see, I mean that was black, was just splattered on there. And just using this, it's just like painting. So before I do anything else with this, whether I apply a wax finish, sanding seed or anything like that, that's why I've put these two patches on here. First of all, I want to try a little bit of sanding sealer. Because it would be nice to put some sand seal sanding sealer on the whole piece so it brings out all the colours like that. So I'm going to put a little bit of sanding sealer on here and I'm just going to dab that first of all dab that over so it does start bringing some of the colours off and yes it does merge them so it does make them all mucky so that's sanding sealer out the window uh, a spray sanding sealer may work fine but again if you put too much on that it runs it's going to make all the right, all the colours run. So the next thing I'm going to do is just try a bit of wood wax 22. Um, got plenty on there. Just on here. See, look again. That's bringing colours all off. I think it's because it's water based. And you rub it in that looks the right mess so that really leaves a spray finish i'm just going to use an ordinary spray lacquer this particular one's a yacht varnish which i do use on the odd occasion and i'm going to give the whole of this a spray and i'm just going to turn around and do it by my door and hopefully none of this will run now that i have actually put a fairly thick coat on uh, a lot more than i normally would do and that's certainly not running at the moment. That's looking like it's holding fine there. So I think that's the answer with these colours is that you need to put some form of a spray finish on. Um, once I've probably got that over once, I could then always apply a wax or anything like that afterwards. This I gave two coats of the spray lacquer, left it a couple of days, came back out to the shed and it wasn't the best finish, so I have just given it a couple of coats of Woodwax 22, parted off the bottom, I did my usual signature on there. The tear out isn't too bad, so I've just sanded it back with my bowl sander head on the drill press. Signed it and dated it as I usually do, and given that a little bit of sanding sealer and then some Woodwax 22 again. So it's actually come out reasonably nicely as a finish wise. Hopefully you can see there the effects of these pencils. 
I've just had a look at the Wood Art Products website and I can't actually see any sign of these on here. So it might just have been a one-off that they were doing for UKIS, but certainly contact them and find out if they're doing them. They are a British company anyway, Derwent. These should be readily available to purchase in the UK. And you should certainly better purchase them through their website. And as I say, they are not a cheap pencil, but hopefully you can see from the way these these have worked as to what's so different about them. Now the other thing I had a problem with as well was that I was finding I think when I did one of these that the water was just bleeding out so much and the reason was was that the the brush one I was using there hopefully you can see there it's a white bit in the inside there something's obviously snapped off because it should have been totally a bit like that as a black piece. So that's probably why the water came out too much but it's it was controllable anyway. Now, this may not be the best example of, of what to do with these. Uh, been a while since I've done any proper pyrography like this. It's not the best wood to do pyrography on, uh, and it's a, certainly a lot harder with the all the curved surfaces doing with the colouring and everything and placing the water on. But, like I say, hopefully you can see the effects and really what you can do with these pencils. When I was doing my little test pieces on here, I mean, I was just putting a blob of the crayon on there and then just using the brush to slowly brush it all around like as if it was a piece of paint so you don't need to go right up to all the edges with your pencil line as long as you've got a reasonable amount as a build up somewhere in the middle you can then use the brush to brush it around thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next project video